And tonight on The Future of Everything, we're tracking some pretty sketchy space junk that could come crashing down this weekend in a big way. This is a, a half a ton right here. Soviet-era spacecraft launched about a half a century ago. It is headed back to Earth, and it is a tricky trajectory with experts expecting it to come down any area over here. We don't exactly know yet. Um, only a few parts of the world are ruled out, including the west coast of the United States, thankfully. Most of Africa also getting a dodge here, and most of Russia, northern Europe. But these red dots, all these red dots along the trajectory lines right here, uh, those are cities with at least a million people. So if you're thinking, yeah, but, you know, we have our, our planetary defense system, the atmosphere, right? Maybe it'll burn up in the atmosphere. Yeah, maybe. But there's a plot twist. The Russians designed this thing to land on Venus, where the average temperature is something like 900 degrees Fahrenheit. It's got one heck of a heat shield that might keep it intact as it comes screaming back down to Earth. Nothing to worry about, right? So let's bring in Jonathan McDowell. He is an astronomer at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysicists, or Astrophysics. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Like, should we be worried here or, you know, it's a pretty big world. We've got a pretty big ocean. What do you think? Right. It's a pretty big world. Uh, the chance that it's going to hit you is minuscule. And so I wouldn't yeah, lose any sleep Yeah, because I'm in L.A. Over. I love Having it. Having said that... <laughs> Right. No, you're fine. Um, uh, I think the latest predictions are moving away from all of the United States as a, as a possible uh, impact zone anyway. It's going to be half a ton falling out of the sky at a couple hundred miles an hour. Uh, if it hits you on the head, you're going to have a really bad day. But, you know, there's a, the chance it'll hit you is so small. Uh, it's more of a question of we've got these uncontrolled spacecraft left over from the Cold War re-entering now and again. Probably we should clean that up. This time we'll dodge it, but eventually we're going to roll the dice and 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 someone's going to get hurt. So so I think you know at a big picture, yes, governments should regulate this and clean up space. Mm -hmm. For today, uh, this is just a nice reminder that the Cold War is knocking on our door after fifty years yeah. and going, hey, remember me? Yeah, delightful. And we do. We definitely need a, a garbage uh, truck, a space garbage truck going out there and just, you know, taking care of all this business. But, like, what went so wrong 50 years ago? We shot this thing at Venus. Like, how did this aimlessly orbit Earth for 50-plus years, and, and how is it now crashing back uh, a, a half a century later? Right. So what you do when you send a Venus probe out is first you put it into a little tight orbit around the Earth, and then you have an upper stage to the rocket that boosts it from that what we call a parking orbit around the Earth uh, to get it to escape velocity and send it off toward Venus. And so in March of 1972, the Soviet Union put two of these probes on the launch pad, and one of them went off and became Venus 8, and it landed on Venus and sent back great data, data that we've never had before about the surface of our, our sister world. Hmm. A few days later, they launched what was meant to be Venus 9. The rocket that was going to boost it out of Earth orbit shuddered to a halt halfway through its hmm. rocket burn. And so they said, oh, no, 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 this wasn't a Venus probe. This is Cosmos 482. It's just some Earth satellite. We never meant, you know, uh, we're not going to admit a failure. Uh, and, and because it didn't have enough speed to escape the Earth, it was in this big looping orbit around the Earth that dipped ever so slightly back into the atmosphere. And every, every few hours, it would go around, dip into the atmosphere, lose a little bit of energy, not go quite so far out the next time. And over 50 years, that orbit has slowly shrunk day by day until now it's skimming the atmosphere and it's about to burn up in the next few hours. I mean, like, all of that just makes me angry that we are not as ambitious as we once were with exploring, like, the outer reaches of our, of our solar system. What is the latest with Venus these days? Like, I think NASA's last mission there was, what, 1989? Uh, right. We, we had uh, the Magellan uh, Venus orbiter that, that mapped the, the planet from 1989 to, I think, 1994. Uh, we've got a bunch of new missions that were approved for development, but now with the NASA budget uh, uh, threatening big cuts, it's it's really not clear what the future of Venus exploration is going to be. 
Uh, and as for the Soviets, who had, they had a lock on Venus in the 60s and 70s. They were the experts. And, and you know, the Russia now just doesn't have the money to mount these interplanetary expeditions. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the public sector money possibly drying up. Jonathan, you and I, we should do that trash truck like in space business, then maybe raise enough private money to to, to go explore Venus. Uh, there's an idea there. I'm telling you, I'll hit you up about that later. Jonathan, yeah, thanks yeah, so yeah. Well, much the, for being the, with us. Space, space garbage trucks are coming. <laughs> Perfect. OK, thank you. Perfect. I'll, hopefully we can drive them. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.